Uh, they showed a significant protective effect of vitamin C against gentamicin induced nephrotoxicity. This protection can be described as a compensatory mechanism involving the induction of antioxidant enzyme activities as a defense system by reducing reactive oxygen species and increasing the nitric oxide to prevent free radical induced cellular transformation. Now, I'm going to pull up another study, which um, is actually going to prove this. A recent study performed by Bihari et al. from 2021, so that's reasonably new, titled Boldenone Undesalinate Mediated Hepatorenal Impairment by Oxidative Damage and Dysregulation of Heat Shock Proteins and Androgen Receptor Expressions, Vitamin C Preventative Role. So this study investigated the role, the preventative activity of vitamin C against well-documented boldenone induced liver and kidney damage. Right? So that's the previous study that we discussed and a couple other studies that we're going to discuss after this. They used male Worcester rats again, five groups, a control, a vehicle control, a vitamin C group where they received orally 120 milligrams per kilogram of body weight. So let's divide it by the actual weight of a Worcester rat between 250 to 350 grams. So each rat would get per day approximately 30 to 40 milligrams of vitamin C. A boldenone group injected intramuscularly 5 milligrams boldenone and destinate or 3.2 milligrams actual boldenone per kilograms of body weight per week. Again, divided by a quarter or a third. And the fifth group received boldenone and destinate and vitamin C as well. So for each Worcester rat, they would get exactly or approximately 30 to 40 milligrams vitamin C per day and per week in a single administration between 0.8 to 1.1 milligram of actual boldenone, not accounting for the ester weight. The experiments continued for eight weeks in duration, after which they took various blood work parameters and they also assessed the oxidative stress indicators based on both hepatic and renal tissues, where they assessed the glutathione levels, glutathione peroxidase, glutathione S transferase, glutathione reductase, as well as malon dialdehyde levels. Now, the setup of this entire study is almost identical, or at least very, very similar to the previous study we discussed, but now we have vitamin C in the picture. So what happened? Right? Based on the results, a significant rise in serum levels of urea, creatinine, and uric acid levels were observed in the boldenone injected rats relative to the control groups. The rats co-administered with vitamin C and boldenone showed a significant reduction in the raised urea, creatinine, and uric acid levels compared to the boldenone injected ones. So you add in vitamin C and your blood work parameters, or at least in cases of Worcester rats, improve. And no apparent changes of real function variables were detected between the control groups and the vitamin C treated groups. Now, moving on, it is of note that when you compare the blood work parameters, the kidney related blood work parameters of boldenone versus boldenone plus vitamin C, it's very, very clear, right? Urea levels are very closer to the control groups with vitamin C treatment compared to boldenone alone. And that's the same for creatinine, that's the same for uric acid. That's even the same for electrolyte levels, the sodium and the potassium, even though sodium levels went down in the boldenone and vitamin C groups compared to the control groups. And potassium levels went up significantly, especially in the boldenone group. And I might be mistaken here, but a potassium level of 7.4 milli equivalent per liter, that's very, very close to a heart attack level if that was the case in humans. So that is of note. Right, all of the other markers uh, changed marginally, very similar to the results we saw in the previous study. Right? Liver enzymes went up in both the boldenone group and the boldenone plus the vitamin C groups. And when we scroll down a little bit to the hepatic and renal oxidative stress markers results, you see that rats administered with vitamin C orally for eight weeks in duration revealed non-significant changes in hepatic and renal oxidant or antioxidant markers compared to the control groups. So no significant changes between rats treated with vitamin C or without vitamin C, but comparing the intramuscular injected rats with boldenone for eight weeks in duration was a significant increase in uh, malon dialdehyde content and a significant reduction in glutathione stores, both in the liver and the kidneys. And when you compare that to the boldenone plus vitamin C group, you see that malon dialdehyde levels went up, but less significantly compared to the boldenone group just by itself. 
and glutathione stores were significantly higher with the boldenone and vitamin C group compared to the boldenone group. So based on these results, it's very safe to say that when you go on boldenone, just as a protective measure for your blood work parameters and your glutathione stores, even though vitamin C doesn't directly contribute to glutathione levels. So imagine if you actually take an acetylcysteine or injectable glutathione alongside your boldenone, it is acting as a very, very, very protective and prophylactic method to keep your blood work parameters and your antioxidant levels in range or at least more favorable compared to taking boldenone just by itself. So I would say that vitamin C and boldenone go hand in hand if after this video you're still interested in taking boldenone and desinate. When we scroll down to the kidney biopsies, even more alarming results. And this is quite alarming for me because I've done a, quite a lot of ultrasounds and imaging on all of my organs. And when you look at these cross sections of the, the liver and the kidneys, right, clear structural changes. So based on these results, various necrotic or nephropathic changes were seen in the boldenone injected animals. These changes involve around the glomeruli, the tubules, and the interstitial tissue. Vitamin C supplementation showed a noticeable nephroprotective effect as the renal sections of the boldenone plus vitamin C treated animals showed a significant reduction in the frequencies and severities of most of the boldenone induced histological changes, yet the kidneys did not maintain their normal histology. So if you take boldenone, your kidneys and livers will look worse. And when you take boldenone with vitamin C, your kidneys and liver will look less worse, but still worse than without ever touching boldenone in the first place or other anabolic androgenic steroids in the first place, albeit that those studies, as far as I can tell, haven't really been performed in a similar setup. But more deep dives could be occurring in the near foreseeable future if you guys just ask me for it. Okay. Let's scroll down a little bit more. The increase in uric acid levels may be caused by a decreased clearance due to a glomerulus filtration rate impairment or local tissue hypoxia or an increased renal cell breakdown. Uh, on the contrary, uh, vitamin C co-administration concurrently with boldenone significantly reduced renal function impairment. So renal function still went down, but the impairment of renal function was less. And uh, similarly, in another study performed by all Timimi, at all in 2019, also reasonably recent, four years old. Uh, they showed a significant protective effect of vitamin C against gentamicin induced nephrotoxicity. This protection can be described as a compensatory mechanism involving the induction of antioxidant enzyme activities as a defense system by reducing reactive oxygen species and increasing the nitric oxide to prevent free radical induced cellular transformation. Let's look at the conclusion. This study showed that vitamin C co-treatment significantly decreased hepatorenal impairments resulted from boldenone injections for eight weeks in duration. And the hepatoprotective and renoprotective effects of vitamin C can be highly associated with its antioxidant activity. Long story short, you want to use boldenone or anything else, any other anabolic androgenic steroids that increases oxidative stress you better damn well make sure you supplement with vitamin C. Personally, I've supplemented with 1,000 milligrams vitamin C with each meal for over a decade. So when I eat four meals per day, that's 4,000 milligrams vitamin C per day. And when I'm in the off season eating six meals per day, you know, eating a lot of nutrients because I'm training a lot harder, probably a lot more oxidative stress, more steroids involved in that context. 6,000 milligrams vitamin C per day. I've done this for years. And guess who doesn't have any issues with their kidneys? And yes, I've used plenty of boldenone and destinate back in my day. And keep in mind that all came from underground labs with God knows what synthetic carrier oil. I've never used veterinary grade for Dodge Equipoise or Pfizer Equipoise brewed in sesame oil with 50 milligrams for one milliliter. So I probably would never even try that. I mean, who knows what carrier oil I actually injected for all of those years that I was still using boldenone and destinate. Was it ethyl oleate? Was it MCT? Was it uh, cottonseed oil? Was it man, propylene glycol or, you know, all this synthetic garbage that I wish I never took, but still did because I didn't know any better. There was nobody on YouTube telling people to stay away from those synthetic carrier oils. And I know a lot of you underground labs are actually watching this and uh, making the appropriate adjustments 
for the products that you're going to produce in the next batch. So please do, please stay away from that synthetic solvent because it's ultimately dissolving the kidneys of your customers and causing cardiovascular damage over longer periods of time. Still, I've always supplemented with vitamin C. I've used a decent amount of underground lab boulderone and desalinate back in my day, and my kidneys are working just fine. My cystatin C is in range, and even though my creatinine levels are elevated when I do a 24-hour urine collection test, and I check my serum creatinine levels versus my urine creatinine levels, and the electrolytes and the albumin, whatever else you can assess with a 24-hour urine collection test, my glomerular filtration rate, not estimated, the actual glomerular filtration rate, no E in front of GFR, 170 or higher, proven with many 24-hour urine collection tests. Is that the vitamin C? I'm sure it was a contributing factor besides the astragalus root extract that I've been using at pretty high dosages for the last multitude of years, ever since Dante Trudel made us aware about the benefits of astragalus root extract regarding kidney health. Now, those studies will probably never be performed, either on human subjects or animal models, right? Co-administration of boldenone, undesinate, or other anabolic androgenic steroids, and vitamin C, and injectable glutathione, and astragalus root extract, because it's probably too expensive, and the medical community probably doesn't care about our weird personal choices regarding the building of muscle tissue and trying to keep ourselves as healthy as possible in the process. Still, a ton of anecdotal evidence out there of people who improve their kidney parameters with antioxidants, vitamin C, injectable glutathione, and astragalus root extract, regardless of the anabolic androgenic steroids that they use.